I want to take this time to introduce all of you to an organization, bed Campaign Against Hunger, that I've been working diligently to change how 10,000 individuals every month eat. By us providing over 1.1 million meals to low families in central Brooklyn, we do have an opportunity to make sure that every family get a proper meal each day. We had a very humble beginning. We started in a church's basement, and watch this, we were just giving out what we thought were great pre-packed grocery bags that we thought we were doing an excellent job, at least I did. I thought, well, you know, there are so many people that are in need, I need to do something. So started out giving very few families a bag, and we watched it grow to about 200 families every week. But one of the things that really surprised me, and first I was a little, just a little upset when I saw families were actually going into the bags right there and then, taking out different products out of the bag. They were bartering or they were just leaving the food on the street. I asked myself, why would families that are so desperately in need of food would do that. Get to find out that a lot of stuff that is in the bag is really, they couldn't eat it. Or it just didn't work for their diets. And so strategically, we begin to plan, what can we do? In 2006, what we did was that we opened the first supermarket style pantry, we call it Super Pantry in bed -Stuy with a 2,000 square feet of warehouse space. And now we were happy. We figured, this is it. We are going to really make a difference in Bedford-Stuyvesant, central Brooklyn. And we have so many families to feed, 10,000. We will make a difference. So we opened up the supermarket-style pantry. And with all the other services we were giving, the food stamp enrollment, the EITC, the affordable health insurance, we thought, really, we were going to make a change. We were going to make a difference in Brooklyn. Now, the families came in, and they started shopping. It's a place where dignity rolls down every aisle. And they took their shopping carts, and they stopped, start shopping. But while they started shopping, what we noticed that the family took only the corn, the fresh corn that was there, the collard greens, some string beans, but all the kale and all the switch chards, the basils, and all the good stuff that we got from the farmer's market, week after week, they were just sitting there. Get to find out the families did not know what to do with them. They were not what they were used to. So again, back to the drawing board, what we did, we said, OK. This is what I'll do. We will begin to educate the families. So we took children, we took seniors, we took families, and we did a lot of workshops and nutritional classes. And now, again, we restocked. And guess what? They were taking all the fresh fruits and vegetables. Success, success, success. But now, after distributing over 200,000 pounds of produce, we were constantly running out. And the cost of produce, fresh fruits and vegetables, I need not to tell you, it's very costly, especially for a pantry, an organization where funding, as you know, is very challenging. And so we decided, well, this is what we'll have to do. We have to do something. So right where I sit in my office, I'm looking at a backyard. And it doesn't really look good, as you can see on the slide. It's nothing to be all about. So I called in a few professionals, and I said to them, could we turn this backyard into an urban farm? They said no. <laughs> I said, why not? I mean, we tested the ground, and it's good. 
Why not? Well, they said, you live in Brooklyn. <laughs> it is not easy to take a thousand square feet of land and change it into an urban farm. Do you know how much work that is? Do you know how hard that is? I said, okay, all right. But I wouldn't let go. You gotta be persistent. When you believe in something, you gotta work hard towards it. And so, got talking to United Way, sent out a seed grant, and they, they said, well, we like the idea. I said, good. So, with their help, this is what we did. We began preparing the land for farming. We believe that if we took all that time to educate individuals on how to eat right, and we're seeing a change because 23% of those that have been coming to the pantry have been diagnosed with um, diabetes. We have a large number of individuals that are obese, and we are seeing hypertension at a large rate, and again, we're seeing cancer cases coming up. Heart disease, where families are telling me, you haven't seen me because, look, I recently had bypass. So we started the work, and yes, it was not easy, but it was surely rewarding because we started working on the lot, a thousand square feet, and then we, what we did, we decided, well, we need to start getting children involved to let them know because I believe if they begin to grow, grow it, they'll eat it because they understand step by step what is needed here. So we begin the work and we begin planting step by step to see how best we could work in the community. As we begin planting, I got a knock knock. Who is there? The neighbor next door. He said to me, I got jealous that you did that with your piece of lot. You know what we did? My wife and I, we decided we're going to clear ours. The neighbor next door and the neighbor next door is about to do the same. We are going to follow suit and we are going to start growing. I said, well, guess what? I have a sustainable booklet that I can share with you that we have written. And so the neighbors also got an opportunity to beautify that area of Brooklyn, Bedford, Stuyvesant. Ladies and gentlemen, look. Look at this. And so we started working and we're seeing. First year, we pulled out 1,200 pounds of produce from the land. Again, the next year, we said, okay, success, success, let's do something else. Let's take those, let's do a pilot program with those seniors, a few seniors that are suffering from diabetes, hypertension, and obesity, and some cancer cases. Let's take them and work with them for the next year. So we got another 1,000 square feet. So now we're harvesting 2,000 square feet of backyard. And what we did, we incorporated a few things. If we are going to take these seniors and we're going to really work with them, the first thing we did was that we started with a, a cooking class, healthy cooking class. And you've heard a lot during the talks that we've, we've been hearing this morning about changing the way we eat. And so this is what we did. We began to get everyone excited about it and getting all the seniors out, as many as we could. So we piloted with a few of our seniors just to see what would happen if we were to monitor them week after week by making sure that not only will they eat um, fresh fruits and veg, but that they would take home a surplus. Then we started a rigid exercise program with them. Just their age group, you can imagine that we had someone that was sensitive to the age begin working with them, and they started reporting that they are losing weight. So after two months, some of the ladies came back and said to us, we're, we're weighing them, we're measuring them. They have lost already over three pounds. To you, it might not be a lot, but to the elderly, that's a whole lot because they're not moving around as much as we do. So the exercise program starts, and I, I want to just introduce you a little bit to Marguerite, 73 years old, look at her go. Marguerite is busy, and she is so excited because she never thought she'd lose any weight, but not only that, her blood sugar reading went down. Our blood pressure reading went down. And so Marguerite is one of our success programs, but there are others that I want to talk to you a little bit about. We have Betty, and Betty is 66 years old. When she came into the pilot program, she brought with her six 
medications that she has been taking. At the end of the program, she was only taking three, not only taking three, but the doses were lower. She had lost weight. Then we have Raleigh here. Raleigh was diagnosed with prostate cancer, and he was very depressed, as you can imagine. But once he got into the program, changed the way he ate, started exercising four to five times per week. And as a matter of fact, becoming a great advocate. Raleigh is in good health right now. We also have our youths that have been working with different plants. And what was so funny, when, when it was harvest time and we, we had the youths to harvest, we noticed one of the things we noticed, they were so happy to harvest. We harvest over 2,500 pounds. These children that usually their stomachs are filled with all kind of junk. I'm here to tell you, we have made a difference. They are in a place and in a position that they're willing to learn and is looking forward to eat more fresh fruits and vegetables. And I'm here to say that they're belly full, but they're still hungry. <laughs> <laughs>